I'm Liz, and by some twist of fate, I'm married to the most amazing guy I've ever met, Alex. We're both 28, got our own place, pay our bills, and live a life that's ours. It's been a year since we said, I do, and honestly, life's been good, except for one little thing, Alex's parents. Now, don't get me wrong, I never expected to be the daughter-in-law in shining armor, but I also didn't expect to be the family's unwanted guest. The day I met my in-laws, it felt like walking into a lion's den with a stake tied to my neck. My mother-in-law, Jane, had this way of looking at me, like she was trying to figure out if I was more of a nuisance or just plain boring. I could tell she had sized me up and found me lacking before I even had a chance to say hello. Alex had warned me about his mom. She can be a bit much, he said, as we drove to their place that first time. But don't take it to heart, okay? I didn't. Or at least I tried not to. At dinner, I was passing the salt when Jane said, You know, Stephanie used to cook such wonderful meals. Remember that risotto, honey? She said to Alex, who just nodded, his jaw tight. Yeah, I remember, he replied, not looking at me. I sat there, salt shaker in hand, feeling like I was invisible. They all talked about Stephanie as if I wasn't there. I felt a pang in my chest, but I swallowed it down with a smile. Sounds like she was a great cook, I said trying to seem unaffected. Jane's eyes met mine, and she smiled, but it didn't quite reach her eyes. Oh, she was. She was a lot of things. That night, I told Alex how I felt. It's like she's measuring me against some ghost. Alex hugged me close. You're the one I chose, Liz. That's all that matters. I wanted to believe him, but as I'd learn, Jane had a long game in mind, and I was the pawn she was eager to sacrifice. I just didn't know it yet. Living with an allergy isn't just inconvenient, it's like having a shadow that's constantly whispering danger in your ear. Since I was a kid, peanuts have been my arch nemesis. It started with a spoonful of peanut paste and a trip to the emergency room that left my parents with a crystal clear message. Keep her away from peanuts and a whole host of other foods if you want her to grow up. It's not just peanuts though. Soy, peas, cherries, almonds, tomatoes, apricots, bananas, and even potatoes, they're all off limits. It's a list that makes waiters raise an eyebrow and friends hesitate to invite me over for dinner. It's also a list that my mother-in-law, Jane, knows by heart, yet she somehow manages to question every single time we're over for dinner. Are you sure you can't even have a little bit of this pie? It's got almond extract, she'd ask, with a tone that hovered between concern and disbelief. I would smile politely, though I'd rather not, and say, yeah, I'm sure. Thanks, though. It was the same dance every time. I remember once, at a family gathering, I was navigating the buffet, a mental checklist running through my head. Alex was by my side, plate in hand, trying to help me find something safe to eat. That's when Jane swooped in, her voice sickly sweet. Liz, you must try this casserole. I made sure it was Liz-friendly, she announced, but the glint in her eye didn't match her nurturing words. Alex paused, his fork mid-air. Mom, you used cream of mushroom soup in this, right? He asked, knowing full well that many brands included soy, a big no-no for me. Jane's smile faltered for a second. Oh, I... I think so. It should be fine. But it wasn't fine, and we both knew it. We made our excuses, me leaving the casserole untouched. But the incident stuck with me. It was a small victory in what felt like an ongoing battle, a battle where Jane held all the cards because she controlled the kitchen. I've learned to navigate this world with careful steps. Eating out is a strategic operation. Alex and I were at our favorite Italian place, a rare find that understood the gravity of food allergies. I'd recited my usual spiel to the waiter, who nodded understandingly. Alex watched me with those soft eyes of his, the ones that said he'd do anything to make my life easier. You okay? He asked, after the waiter left. Yeah, I'm fine. I just hate making a fuss, I replied, folding my napkin on my lap. You're not making a fuss. You're making sure you don't, you know, die, he said, half joking, half serious. I laughed, a short, grateful sound. Well, when you put it that way? After dinner, as we walked under the clear night sky, I felt light, happy. That's when my phone buzzed with a text from Jane. 
Her words were like a cloud over the moon, darkening the moment. Be careful, Liz. Not everyone takes your condition seriously. Wouldn't want anything to happen to you. I read the text to Alex, who wrapped an arm around me, pulling me close. She's just trying to get to you, he said. But as much as I wanted to shrug it off, I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's message was more than just a jab. It was a warning, a reminder that my allergy made me vulnerable, not just to food, but to people like her, who saw it as a weakness to be exploited. The rest of the walk home, I couldn't help but think about all the close calls, all the accidental exposures, and how easily something could go wrong. It wasn't just the peanuts or the soy or the peas. It was the realization that my allergy was more than a personal battle. It was a chink in my armor that someone like Jane could see as an opportunity. And that thought was scarier than any allergic reaction I'd ever had. Dinners at Jane's house were always a production, like a play where everyone knew their parts except me. I was the wild card, the one who could unintentionally cause a scene with a single bite. Alex tried to make it better, but there's only so much you can do when you're playing in someone else's home court. One particular evening, the tension was as thick as the gravy on the table. Jane was bustling around, placing dish after dish on the table. I sat there, my own plate empty, waiting to figure out what I could eat without a trip to the hospital. Alex, darling, pass the green beans to Liz. They're just divine, Jane said, her voice dripping with a sweetness that didn't reach her eyes. I eyed the beans, but something seemed off. What's in them? I asked. Oh, just a touch of almond slivers for crunch, she said, waving a hand dismissively. I put my hand up, stopping Alex's reach. I can't eat those, remember? Almonds are a no-go for me. Jane feigned surprise, a hand to her chest. Oh dear, I must have forgotten. Silly me. Alex's chair scraped back as he stood up. Mom, this is serious. Liz could end up in the hospital. His voice was firm, edged with a frustration that made Jane's eyes narrow just a little. I just wanted to make something nice, she said. It's not my fault Liz has all these allergies. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence. The other relatives glanced around, forks paused midair, not sure where to look. I felt a flush creeping up my neck, embarrassed by the spotlight. Alex's dad, Mark, tried to break the tension. Let's just enjoy the meal, shall we? There's plenty Liz can eat. But the damage was done. The rest of the dinner passed in strained politeness, with Jane asking pointed questions about my allergies, as if she were taking notes for next time. Later, when Alex and I were alone, he apologized. I'm sorry, Liz. I should have double-checked everything before we came. I shook my head, tired of feeling like a problem to be managed. It's not your fault, but I'm starting to think your mom does these things on purpose. He didn't answer, and he didn't need to. We both knew the truth. Jane was serving up a side of malice with every meal, and I was the main course. I could always tell when Jane had been working on Alex. He'd get this distant look in his eyes, like he was seeing me, but also seeing through me, weighing her words against his own judgment. This particular evening, it was like a cloud had settled over him, and I knew it before he even said a word. Mom thinks we should consider. Well, she thinks we might not be thinking about the future enough, Alex muttered, not meeting my eye as he fumbled with the TV remote. The future? I asked, a sinking feeling in my gut. Yeah, you know, kids and your health issues, he continued, the word issues hanging awkwardly in the air between us. I felt a tightness in my chest. She talked to you about my allergies again, didn't she? He sighed, setting the remote down. She's just worried, Liz. She thinks it's a lot for us to handle, especially if we want a family. I bristled. We've talked about this. I've managed so far, haven't I? And there are plenty of people with allergies who have kids. Alex ran a hand through his hair, a sure sign he was stressed. I know, I know, it's just... She has this way of making me doubt things. The room was quiet for a moment, the tension thick. I watched him, this man I loved, wrestling with the seeds of doubt his mother had planted. Alex, do you doubt us? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. No. He looked up, finally, his eyes clear and firm. No, I don't. I just hate that she keeps bringing it up. I hate that it makes us fight. 
I reached for his hand, our fingers intertwining. We're not fighting. We're on the same side, remember? He nodded, pulling me into a hug. You and me against the world, right? Right, I said. But as I held him, I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's words were like weeds, threatening to grow wild and choke the life out of the beautiful thing we had. And I knew then that it wasn't just my allergies that needed managing. It was the doubts that could seep into the cracks of even the strongest relationships. The news of my pregnancy came as a surprise, a happy one for Alex and me, a complicated one for everyone else. The day we announced it to his parents, Jane's reaction was like watching a robot trying to mimic human emotions. A pause, then a smile that didn't quite match the situation. We're going to have a baby, Mom, Alex said, his voice a mix of pride and caution as he gauged his mother's reaction. That's wonderful, Jane managed to say, the words sounding foreign in her mouth. We must have a family dinner to celebrate. I was skeptical. Celebrations at Jane's were never just celebrations, but I saw the hopeful look in Alex's eyes and agreed. The night of the dinner, the house was buzzing with relatives. Jane was the perfect hostess, floating from guest to guest with a grace that felt almost genuine. When she reached us, her smile was practiced. Congratulations, Liz, she said. This is such a joyous occasion. Thank you, Jane, I replied, trying to match her formality. We're excited. Alex wrapped his arm around my waist, a silent thank you for playing along. As dinner approached, I felt the familiar anxiety. A table full of food was a minefield for me, but tonight, I hoped, would be different. The table was a feast, dishes upon dishes laid out, and I felt every eye on me as I hesitated, my hand hovering over the options. Go on, dear, Jane urged. Eat up. You're eating for two now. I smiled weakly, choosing the safest options, vegetables and rice, plain and simple. But as I reached for a slice of bread, Jane stopped me. Actually, maybe not that one, she said quickly. I'm not sure if the baker used soy flour. I paused, bread in hand, and met her gaze. There was a flicker of something there. Concern, or was it a challenge? Thank you for letting me know, I said, putting the bread down. But the warning bells were already ringing in my head. How did she know about the soy flour? It seemed too close a call, too perfect a save. The rest of the meal passed in a blur, congratulations mingling with the clinking of glasses. But I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's hospitality was a veneer, and beneath it lay a trap, set and waiting for just the right moment. The family dinner in honor of our future baby was nothing short of a banquet. Jane had outdone herself, and there was a spread that would make a Thanksgiving dinner look modest. But my stomach was in knots, not from hunger, but from fear. Every dish was a potential hazard, a hidden enemy that could send me to the hospital, or worse. As we all took our seats, the chatter around the table was lively, filled with the usual family gossip and stories. Jane was at the head of the table, presiding over the feast like a queen in her court. She called everyone to attention with a gentle tap of her glass. Before we begin, I just want to say how thrilled we are to be celebrating Liz and Alex's upcoming addition to our family, Jane announced, her voice steady and clear. There was a round of hear, hear, and applause. I forced a smile, feeling Alex squeeze my hand under the table. Thank you, everyone, I said. We're really looking forward to this new chapter in our lives. The meal began, and I tentatively picked at my food, choosing the simplest items. Alex watched me, his brow furrowed with concern. You doing okay? He asked quietly. Yeah, just being careful, I replied, pushing a roasted potato around my plate. Jane's eyes were on me, and I felt like a specimen under a microscope. Liz, you haven't touched your salad. The dressing is on the side, just as you like it, she said, her voice tinged with a forced cheerfulness. Thank you, Jane. I'm just not much of an appetite tonight, I said avoiding the salad that I knew could easily contain hidden allergens. As the dinner wore on, the tension grew. Every time Jane offered me something, my anxiety spiked. The room felt hot, the walls inching closer with each passing minute. Then came the cake. It was a beautiful confection, layers of sponge and cream that made the room ooh and ah. 
Jane cut a slice and handed it to me with a smile that might have been genuine if I hadn't known better. For the mom to be, she said. I looked at the cake, then at Alex, then at Jane. I really shouldn't, I said, but it looks delicious. Oh, come on, Liz. One little bite won't hurt. For the baby, Jane pressed, her voice sweet as the icing. That's when Alex's dad, Mark, stepped in, his hand swift as he knocked the plate from my hands. The cake tumbled to the floor, and a stunned silence fell over the room. What the hell, Dad? Alex exclaimed, his voice a mix of anger and confusion. Mark stood, his face pale, but his voice firm. I saw the label in the trash. That cake has peanut oil in it. The room erupted in chaos. Jane's face was the picture of shock, but her eyes, her eyes gave her away. There was a flash of something there. Fear, maybe? Guilt? Alex stood, his chair clattering behind him. Mom, did you know about this? He demanded. Jane's mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. And in that moment, the truth was as clear as the danger that had been on my plate. The room was dead silent after Mark's revelation, the dropped cake like a crime scene on the hardwood floor. Everyone's eyes were locked on Jane, who seemed to shrink under the collective gaze. Mom, is it true? Did you know? Alex's voice cut through the tension, sharp and demanding. Jane's eyes flickered with something dark before she regained her composure. Of course not, I would never. Her voice trailed off, unconvincing. Mark wasn't having any of it. I saw the shopping list, Jane. Peanut oil for cake. It was right there, in your handwriting, he said, his voice steady but laced with disappointment. The murmurs around the table grew louder, a mix of disbelief and anger bubbling up from the family. Alex was shaking his head, his hands balled into fists. How could you, Mom? Liz could have died. I was frozen in my seat, the gravity of the situation anchoring me down. This wasn't just carelessness or forgetfulness, it was intentional. Jane's mask finally slipped, her face twisted in anger. I didn't want it to come to this, but she's not right for you, Alex. She's weak, and now she's bringing a child into this world who will be just like her. Alex took a step toward his mother, incredulous. Weak? Liz is the strongest person I know. And you? How could you be so cruel? I could feel the eyes on me, waiting for me to break down, to crumble under the weight of Jane's words. But I didn't. Jane, I said, my voice surprisingly calm. You've made your feelings very clear. But this is not just about me. This is about a family, your grandchild. Jane looked away, her jaw clenched, and for the first time, I saw the hint of fear in her eyes. Maybe she realized that her actions hadn't just endangered me, but her relationship with her son, her reputation, everything. The rest of the evening was a blur. There were arguments, tears, and hushed conversations as the family tried to process what had happened. Alex and I left early, the weight of the evening heavy on our shoulders. We didn't speak much on the drive home. What was there to say? The truth was out, and with it, the facade of a polite, if not happy, family was shattered, all because of a peanut. The drive home was quiet, the kind of silence that's heavy, filled with things unsaid. When we finally walked through our front door, Alex and I just stood there, the echo of the night's drama still ringing in our ears. Alex was the first to break the silence. I can't believe my own mother would do something like that, he said, his voice hollow. I sat down on the couch, the cushion failing to comfort me. I know, it's a lot to take in. He sat beside me, taking my hands in his. I'm so sorry, Liz, this is, it's unforgivable. I looked at him, seeing the pain in his eyes, and my heart ached. It's not your fault, Alex. We couldn't have known she'd go this far. But the truth was there, hanging between us. Jane had crossed a line and there was no going back. The family was in pieces. Some stood by us, shocked and appalled by Jane's actions, while others struggled to wrap their heads around the reality of the situation. The next few days were a whirlwind. Alex's phone buzzed constantly with messages and calls. Relatives wanted to express their shock, their support, their apologies, and through it all, there was a deafening silence from Jane. No apologies, no explanations, nothing. Alex finally broke the news to me a week later. 
Dad's left her. He can't get past what she did. He said, he said it's been a long time coming. I wasn't sure how to feel. Relief, sadness, pity. And Jane? I asked tentatively. He said she's not handling it well. She's alone now, Alex replied, a twinge of something like regret in his tone. We sat in our living room, the walls we'd painted together, the furniture we'd picked out during countless trips to the store. It was our home, filled with our memories, our love. And outside, there was a storm brewing, one that threatened to uproot everything we knew. But in that moment, I realized that no matter what happened, we had each other. We were a team, about to bring a new life into the world, and that was what mattered. I love you, Liz, Alex said, pulling me close. I love you too, I whispered back. The fallout from that night would linger. The scars it left on our family would take time to heal. But as I looked at Alex, at the life we'd built, and the future we were about to embark on, I knew that we'd weather any storm together. And as for Jane, she was a chapter in our lives that we had closed, a story that we wouldn't let define us. From now on, it was just us, our baby, and the road ahead. Whatever it brought, we'd face it together.